another play at card making today. I have my 95 pound mixed media paper. I have some distressed oxides and this card I'm going to make with a grungy steampunk theme. And I'm not quite sure. I have this great stamp I've had for a while and I'm not sure if I'm just going to ink her on paper and leave her as is or if she's going to get metallic and embossed. So we'll just kind of see how it goes and we'll see how it turns out. So let's start. Now I haven't done this way of using Distress Oxides before. If you watched my videos in the past, normally I take my dabbers and I dab it onto the paper. But today I want to try where I've seen people, they just kind of put some of it down on their mats and then they wet it and they run their paper through it. So I'm going to give that a shot and just see how it goes and if not, I have more paper. I think they do that and then they just... So that is a start. I need to get some on this side. That is definitely a start, so I'm going to move that out of the way and get this heat dried. You may hear Holly in the background. She's enjoying the sunshine in the window today. Okay, so that is dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more and hopefully I'm putting the right lid on the right one. Frayed burlap. Frayed burlap. I may not have these back in the right spots, but we'll see what happens. And walnuts. Get some more of that walnut on there. I'm going to ink it up, wet it up, and now I want to get this side And it may have worked a little better if I had one of those um, pads, but I just, I don't own one of those craft mats. Okay. And I think I may go ahead to help with the grunging and do some of my own squirting from this side. There we go. I'm going to let that dry now. Getting some really neat modeling, modeling, modeling going on. You can see. So I think I like that background as it is. I don't want to get too crazy and distracting with it. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of my wax paper there. Holly's announcing she's leaving the room. And I really love how this has grunged. This is really looking exactly what I was hoping for. You can see all the great texture. So I really like that, that method. I'll have to practice with that more and play with it more because you really, really get the great effect that I was going for. Now I do want to add, because I love shimmer, you guys know, you've seen my videos, I have to have some glimmer. I'm trying to find which Distress Mica Spray I want to use. So I have Tarnished Brass. And I have a silver, but we don't want silver. And I have a bronze, but I don't know which one's going to show up. Let's see. These are all my misters, my shimmer sprays I'm trying to keep on their side. Per instructions. So this one is very coppery, and I'm afraid it's going to get lost in the page. You can kind of see that even looking in the video. It almost matches the page. This one, I'm not quite sure what the coloring is, but I think it has more black. 
So that may be what I'm looking for here. So let's just go and give it a test. It's got kind of a gray to it almost. Tarnished brass. Let's try that again. A few tester spots. It's got almost a gray effect to it and I really want more brown than gray. So let's give this one a test. See that's more the look I'm going for. You'll see more shimmer. Okay, I'm just going to do it. And maybe I'll throw in a little of the tarnish brass as well. And what's interesting is it's reacting with the edges of the Distress Oxide and it's actually picking up on where the water sat and dispersed from the paper. It's now being edged by the mica sprays. So I'm going to see if I can, you can see where it's filling in. So that's kind of interesting. That's a neat effect. I'm going to get this dry. This may take a minute because mica sprays do take a little bit to dry. So if it takes too long, I'll just be back in a few. is really got some nice shimmering background going there. So now what's going to happen is when this is all dry, I actually have a black card for this to go on like that. So you're going to have all that gorgeous shimmery background and I was hoping to do a little embossing on the sides here. But now with that shimmer spray already, I think the embossing may be too much with the gold on top of it all. So I'm going to put that to the side. I'm not going to do that. But what I do want to do is get out my, let's see, my black archival ink or maybe my one of my dark browns. And I want to add some of these gears to the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and end up using black. And I know a lot of the times I've been using my Tonic Studio Tim Holtz stamp platform, but for this one I don't need it to be super precise, just kind of where I want to put them. So I'm just going to, let me make sure this is fairly dry here. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of gears in the corner. side here. Maybe a little bit peeking over the edge here. Like that. Okay. And there is my grungy steampunk background for my lady. Now, I'm going to set this off to dry. I'm going to clean off my spot. Okay, so I have my Tim Holtz Tonic Stamping Platform. Now on this one, I was using clear on my last video, but I have a red rubber stamp. I'm going to make sure I take the clear off, the sticker off the back. I'm going to want it here. And I want to make sure that the rubber part is facing up because this is a red rubber stamp. I need to get my paper in here. That would probably help. This is just a scrap piece of the media paper again. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. This one's really intricate, so I'm hoping I may have to stamp a few times. I think my ink pad's actually running out, but I'm hoping it really shows up well because there's so many great little details on here from the feathers to the stockings.
And this is rocking, so I'm hoping it's leaving a good impression and not... I think she needs one more round. I won't press too hard because I don't want it to shake too much. There we go. Perfect. Fabulous. Get this off of here. That cover it up. So we have this and we have our girl that I am going to do a little fussy cutting on. I'm also going to make sure I distress the edges of this paper and that I add some of the brown to tie it into the background. And I don't need to use my big scissors, I'm only using my little ones. There we go. And she is going to go right there, cycling in the middle of the page. And since I have the white, I think I'm going to have to add in some white splatters too. I think we're going to need some white splatters. But first I'm going to get her distressed and taken care of. So I'm going to need my, I'll use the walnut stain, distress oxide. Get one of my darker dabbers here. Just kind of get that brown in there. Grunge it up. There we go. Really get in there. So I want to make sure all the edges have that brown so she starts to blend in. And I'm going to do a little distressing. This just kind of tears the edge a little, makes it look a little older. There we go. And this is from the Tim Holtz line also. I may be a tonic as well. It's a little distressor. And here we go. She's going to sit right there. And you know, I don't think I'm going to need splatters because I think that brown, if I, I work on adding a little more throughout it in little spots, I think it's going to really help with the white. That, um, I'm not going to have to add any. Here we go. Just kind of age her a little. So we still have some white. And she is wonderful. So I'm going to get her on her little standoffs. And then I think we're going to need a Tim Holtz quote or phrase here. And then we will get it all glued down. So, standoffs, sticky standoffs. I'm going to go with a bunch of little ones because I don't want it to be so obvious. And I'm afraid I'm putting her in all the mist. Go. 
I know it probably would have been easier to use some of the big ones, but I have a bunch of little ones to use up, so. Oop. Make sure the wings stand out. There we go. So when I set her down, yeah, that puts her pretty solid. Okay. One, two, three, four, Okay. And I'm going to set her right in there. And look at that. That is just, I'm loving that with all the metallics. And then I think I just need a little word or tag right there. So I'm going to check out my big chat from Tim Holtz. And I think I'm going to use, let's see, Never Ordinary. No, I don't want to use Never Ordinary. Inspire. Now where do I want to put my little Inspire? Do I think I need it here? I feel like something's missing down here, guys. What do I do? What do I do? Maybe like that with a dot under it? There we go. And now, I think just because of that, I need just a little bit of the gears in the bottom corner. I feel like something's missing right there. Or, I'm just going to put my initials. Here we go. That's where I'm going to initial it. So there is my grunge step and I'm not done. I'm not done. All right, we're gonna get the walnut stain out again. And I'm just gonna go around the edges just a little bit. Not trying to totally get rid of the white, but I don't want you to see when I glue it down the actual white edges. And then I'll get this glue down on here. And then there you have it an Inspire Steampunk themed card. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to glue this after I'm done filming because I want to give the Distress Oxide and the Micas time to spray and I may end up just purchasing some double sided tape so that this way I'm not reacting this with water. But this is what the final product is going to look like and I will be sure to post photos. So if you liked the video please remember to give it a thumbs up Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks so much for watching.